In today's example, I'm going to show you how you can fine tune Yellow V8 to pick out every single player on a football field, which is really impressive. So here's one example. You can see that I've got player on every single one of these players that are on the field. If I pass in a different test image that I've brought on, same again. And then one last one, same again. We're just getting players all across the field, which is really cool. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to do the same with whatever data set you want. So to begin with, we're going to copy all of the work that we did in the previous video and carry on from there. So that means that if you haven't seen the first part of this video, make sure that you go and complete that, then come back to this video and then we'll custom train the model. So I'm just going to copy the entire directory and then I'm just going to paste it into the same directory. I'm going to rename it to six yellow V8 object detection. And then I'm just going to open up the Jupyter notebook. Before we get started, we do need to point Visual Studio Code to the environment that we set up in the previous video. So to do that, I'm just going to click on Select Kernel in the top right hand corner, and then I'm going to click on .vemv, which is the environment that we set up in the first video. OK, now that I've specified my kernel as the previous virtual environment that we were just working on, I'm going to clear all outputs and I'm going to run everything from start to finish. And so if I scroll all the way to the bottom, all being well, I should be able to still see my final image all annotated exactly as it was before. So we're now ready to start training the YOLO model on custom data. To begin with, we are going to need a data set in the YOLO V8 format. And to get that, we can head over to a website called RoboFlow. RoboFlow Universe specifically, which is available at universe.roboflow.com. And there's loads of them, which is brilliant. So if I knew exactly what it was I was looking for, I could search here. So something like football or something along those lines. But as it happens, the one I am going to use is actually on the home page here. So I'm actually going to use the football players detection data set. If I click on through to that, we can see a sample of the data set. So we can see that there's an image here of uh, a bunch of people playing football. And you can see that they have been tagged with player, the ball has been tagged, and we've even got the goalkeeper tagged as well. So this is a perfect data set for us to use to train YOLO V8 to get good at recognizing football players. So to get help, I'm going to click on download this data set in the top right hand corner. And then I'm going to specify the YOLO V8 format as the version that I want. There are ways that also that you can train YOLO with Coco. But for the time being, just to keep things nice and simple, we're going to download the data set in YOLO V8 format. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on download it to computer. I'm going to hit continue. Wait a second and my download should begin. So after you've downloaded your data set, what you want to do is copy it into the same folder that your Jupyter notebook is stored in. So you can see here that I've actually just done that already. So football players detection YOLO V8.zip. This exists inside of our parent YOLO V8 object detection fine tuning video folder, which is exactly where we want it. What we are going to do next is we are going to create a new directory inside of this parent directory and we're going to call it datasets. Then we are going to drag and drop our dataset into that directory. So this zip file now exists inside that datasets directory. Because this is quite a long file name, I'm going to rename this dataset to just footballplayers.zip just so it's going to be easier to reference in a second. So to train our model, we are going to load our model into memory. Then we are going to train it. And then we are going to save that version out and use that as a checkpoint that we're going to come back to later. So just as a reminder from the previous video, you can see that we initialized our video by importing YOLO from Ultralytics and constructed it using the YOLO constructor and passed in the checkpoint name that we wanted to use. Again, if you aren't familiar with this, please do make sure that you've seen the first video because we cover all of that in the first episode. So now that we know that our model instance is stored in a variable core model, we can now train that model on the data set that we have provided, which is going to be our football players. So I'm going to scroll right to the bottom. I'm going to create a brand new block of code. I am going to type in model.train and then I'm going to pass in three arguments. The first one is going to be data and we are going to pass it a reference to dataset footballplayers.zip. You don't even need to extract it. YOLO V8 will automatically do all of that for you when it's training. The next argument we're going to pass in is the number of epochs. The number of epochs are how long you effectively want to train it for. You don't want to train it for too long because then overfit, but you also don't want to under train it because it won't have had enough time to be able to perform the task properly. So you might need to do a little bit of trial and error to find the right number of epochs for your data set. But for the time being, I'm going to use 10 epochs as a reference. And then the third argument we're going to pass in is going to be device and I'm going to pass it MPS. The reason I'm passing MPS is because training on an M1 or M2 uh, device. However, if you are running this on Google Colab or if you are planning on running this on Kaggle or something along those lines, 
You might want to specify this as CUDA if you have access to an CUDA enabled GPU. Otherwise, if you don't, then you can just provide CPU. So those three options are either MPS, CUDA, or CPU. But like I said, I'm running mine on a MacBook, so I'm going to provide MPS. Now that I've done that, I should be able to hit play and my model will begin training. And we can observe just down here, there's a little progress bar that will tell us just how long each epoch is going to take. So if we just wait a second, we can see that this epoch, one out of 10, is gonna take about 20, 25, 20 seconds. So around, probably around 30 seconds on average per epoch, which means this shouldn't take much longer than about five or six minutes to train, which is great. So now that we train that model, we can load it up and just see how well it's performing. And the way that we can do that is you'll notice there's a new directory inside your project folder, which is going to be called runs. And inside of that, there will probably be another folder called detect. And then after that, there will be a directory called train. I would select the train value with the highest number. So if you've got train one to 100, for example, just we're gonna work with train 100. So inside of Visual Studio Code, we are going to navigate to the directory that our training has performed in. And we can see that there's a bunch of uh, different graphs and things like that, that we can explore. For example, the confusion matrix, we can see the labels. We can even see some examples of some batches, which is really cool. But what we care about right now to load our image in is these weights inside of the weights directory. So if I spin that down, we can see that there's one called best.pt and one that's called last.pt. The one that we're interested in is the best.pt. So I've headed back over to our Jupyter notebook. I'm gonna create a new block of code. I'm going to specify model is YOLO. So once again, using that same initializer as before, but this time, instead of pointing it to a name of a checkpoint for it to download from GitHub, I'm actually going to point it to a local directory. So I'm going to go dot slash runs slash detect slash train free. This number might be higher, lower, different to yours. Again, we want to choose the highest one. Train free slash weights forward slash best dot PT. And then we can just log our model to the console and hit play. And if everything's gone correctly, we should be able to see that our YOLO model has been imported. So great. Next up, we want to test our image out. So what I've done ahead of time is I've just headed over to Google and I picked out a couple of test images. So this one's from a video game. This one is also from a video game. This one is from a YouTube video and this one's also from a YouTube video. So we've got a couple of tests that we can try. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to import our image. I'm going to call it football image to process. And once again, I'm going to use pillow to open our image. So image.open. And this time I'm going to point it to, let's start with test zero.jpg and just see how it behaves. Next, we are going to get our results in exactly the same way as we did in run. We're going to run our model on our football image to process. And this time I'm going to specify a confidence value of 0.5 because I only want it to show me the annotations where it has a 0.5 or higher confidence. Confidence is usually measured from zero to one. So that means it has a 50% or higher confidence that it is a player or it is a goalkeeper. So now that we have our results, we can actually just call that same visualize outputs function that we created earlier, passing in our image and our boxes, just like we did before. So the way that we're going to do that is we are just going to go visualize outputs, pass in our football image to process, and then we are going to go results dot boxes. We can see that it has picked out every single one of our players. If I change this to test one, we can see that this has picked out all of our players, which is working great. Hasn't quite figured out that this is a goalkeeper, but I'm pretty sure that if I gave it a little bit more training time, it would get better at that. Let's try one more image and just see how it got on. Again, seems to be working absolutely fantastically. And that's all there is to it. I would probably recommend running this on a Google Colab instance or a Kaggle instance if you don't have access to a powerful GPU at home, just because that way you can get more results in a shorter time span. But for me, honestly, just training it for 10 minutes on a MacBook Pro, I've got pretty good results already. So I might just keep going for another hour and see how we get on. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please do subscribe. Um, and if you do have any ideas for videos that you would like to see in the AI space, please do drop a comment. I'm really enjoying making these videos and it's really encouraging to see people reaching out and asking me to do more. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.